In this video, we want to look at three trigonometric identities, arc sine of x plus arc cosine of x equals pi over 2, arc secant of x plus arc cosecant of x is equal to pi over 2, and arc tangent of x plus arc cotangent of x is equal to pi over 2. First, we'll want to get a good visualization for why this is the case, and then we'll want to prove it and see that these three facts should actually not surprise us at all. So let's start with a graph of arc sine and a graph of arc cosine. We see that these two graphs are symmetrical about this line here and this line must be just the average of the two functions, right? So if I took this high point and this low point and took the average, I'd get this point here. If I took the average of this high point and this low point, I'd get this point here, right? So let's look at that average. That would be arc sine of x plus arc cosine of x divided by 2. Right, so that would be their line of symmetry, basically. And our program is telling us here that this is uh, pi over 4. This is line pi over 4. And we said before if we added these up, we would get pi over 2. So let's just not divide by 2 here. And then, of course, then we indeed get the line pi over 2. So that's how that works for arc sine and arc cosine. Let's now look at a similar view of arc secant and arc cosecant. Again, we see that these are symmetrical around some line around here. So again, we can view the average of these functions. That would be arc secant of x plus arc cosecant of x divided by 2. So this line here is pi over 4. And again, if we don't divide by 2, then we have, again, the line pi over 2, which is what we wanted to have. So let's look at that same thing for tangent and cotangent. Again, we have a symmetrical shape, and this must be the line about which they're symmetrical again. We'll look at their average arc tangent of x plus arc cotangent of x divided by 2. Again, this is their average. And again, we see that that is at pi over 4. If we just fail to divide by 2, then that turns into pi over 2. So we see that the sum of these two functions is again pi over 2. Now, just for a little fun here, let's graph each one of these functions all at one time. So we'll have arc sine, arc cosine, arc secant, arc cosecant, arc tangent, and arc cotangent. And we get a nice shape here, almost a star. And since we saw that the average of these was always pi over 4, let's graph that as well. So let's now ask ourselves the question, what do these equations, what do these identities actually mean? Well, let's type that out here again. Arc sine of x plus arc cosine of x being equal to pi over 2. Now I said before that that shouldn't surprise us. Why shouldn't that surprise us? Well, arc sine of x is just an angle, and it is the angle that you would have to take the sine of in order to get x. And arc cosine of x is, of course, also just an angle, and it's the angle that you would have to take the cosine of to get x. And these two angles, since sine and cosine are co-functions, are complements of each other, and so will always add up to 90 degrees, or pi over 2. But let's prove that. Let x be in the closed interval negative 1 to 1. So in other words, x is in the output range of sine and cosine. Then there is some theta between 
negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. In other words, in the output range of arcsine, such that sine of theta is equal to x. Right? So first we have an x, and then we just find some value of theta so that the sine of theta gives us x. And it's actually then also the case, since sine and cosine are cofunctions, that the cosine of 90 degrees minus theta, so pi over 2 minus theta, is also equal to x. Okay? Then we have, and now we can simply prove the identity. So arc sine of x plus arc cosine of x. Now I can just sub in for these two statements that we had before. That would be the arc sine of sine of theta plus the arc cosine of cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. And now since this angle theta is within the output range of arc sine, then the arc sine of sine of theta is simply equal to theta. And similarly, it turns out that uh, this pi over 2 minus theta is indeed in the output range of arc cosine. So I can just say that the arc cosine of cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is just equal to pi over 2 minus theta, which gives us pi over 2. And so we see that the fact that arc sine of x plus arc cosine of x is equal to pi over 2 is simply a corollary of the fact that sine and cosine are cofunctions and that the same goes for the other two pairs of functions.